the 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 I wanted one a long time ago to go to a great day like a lot of people. He just sit down on the head and 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 just sit
to what already has been transmitted in the morning. While we can wear this name and convenience of some part of our business, we can just have a lot of money to the observer and a private in which way that they've gone on time and time and time and time. Apparently, they said that many people who come to the contact that went with what they're concerned with him and they found out for one another. You take it out of your file on the road if you could better turn the information with another person and finally you see it in the court of effort. For the great reason, they didn't have that, that we need to help the union, but what we got to speak to the department and the following we need to make our own business. Also, for the rest of the board, we need to keep in mind that the department has a lot of problems, and there were days over World War III PM. Also, we need to keep in mind that the department has a lot of problems, and there were days over World War III PM. And for the other side of the whole line, I mean, what was the side of the meeting you kept in mind? You're really going to have to sit in there and you're like, I don't know, we're going to have to sit in there. And that's a city in the early change. Tell me what are you saying here, don't know that maybe you would try to make more or that might make any change significantly. But I'll be interested in the turn of the general opinion of the AV meeting, or the Snyder meeting. And the opinion is that they need to be a reasonable or proper participation. Sure, I think this part might have been a meeting about their opinions, or a dynamic meeting. They are our followers. I had a very record of meeting back up to the senior work of the town on the board, and she didn't even would have ever required our number. However, she found out that I was given an email about the lightning and the biology, where the department had to take a time out for the year early to do with that in the night of the meeting. The department had to have a shout out to the employees, and I know the biology is created when we make them not all over the world. One of the six of our records are going to come out and we will buy out for over a half hour. There are many things that they take on, all of them have been meeting since they are in the evening. But I think that if they were to go out like they did, you would not make it in that time. My mom would have been right back at the school when we had been in the late 80s. Supervisor for sessions and by our group that they had been distributed by the issue of the young lady at the end of it. He doesn't believe that I'm going to be hating that ever. I see the AAD and the administrator at the district for all those committee and all the public attendance board of health committee and they are all held in the union. She will be in attendance for the AAD and the legendary research for our other activities. She has all those on our front one of those from the public where it has a night night meeting. The only time she has ever been here is from the men and the committee and the board of health committee. I think the right work can be heard every year that they should be very heard at the end of the day. And then it's the issue you have heard. If you were able to go to the people, they'll keep you busy because they are in a house. It was moved by fire and seconded by oil. They'll be coming out more than what you get. I may have it on the other side. I think it's a good idea. The role of all of us take it and we'll share it. Second, we need to let other people know. We need to let other people know. We need to let other people know. They say they are requiring a re-certification of the IMRR eligibility every two years for all elected officials. Expecting the plan to require on the tier one one to be more than 600 dollars a year, you participated in the IMRR. Tier two, you can be added at January 1, 2012. You can require on the level of 100 dollars a year if I participate. When IMRR is on the line, they found there was no documentation for the elected officials. How many of our reports are required to be given? There's all of them that I can make a certified they are eligible to be in the IMRF. They are not required to be certified that the county of Moore was certified and that he was elected to do that work we can require and improve our office. If the resolution is not received by September 1, they will go to the election to choose from the IMRF. Like I said, they need to move on to the resolution in July. They're going to write down that there's no requirement for someone to live with the petition to the final hour of the year. They also have that statement to write down that one of us. Sure, there's just a step on continuing to work with the final hour of the resolution. Soon they think that they tell them that they have a resolution and they go to the resolution and they go to the resolution and they go to the resolution. Administrators that have no authority or are not on the level to be monitored or are more worried about how they're going to write the patrol off the floor than any work. There was no idea that they were going to write the patrol on the initiative. 
Mr. Chair, I'm not going to have any order. Do you make any of the finance? Who said they lose to them to call on the report on that matter for them? Your committee has been in the Treasury Center on May 4, 2017, at 9 a.m. Member and President will tag all bills, curters, and John Johnson, and Mr. Gray, Mr. Addison. Also, I've done the report for Chairman John Schurter, Finance Director of the Handy Department, Treasurer, and then to take the information to write records on how many of Supervisor of the Sutton, and I think the ADA administrator, Shepard, the ADA director of the Area State Agency, I think the ADA director of the Area State Agency, Susie Warner, and the Forest Service Service, and the Shoal Coast Service, and the Wayne Angel of the Prime Minister's Public, the meeting of the Shoal Coast Service, and 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 the Plain lower, it was a judge that all all contracts, all all contracts, independent contractors should have that domain added as an additional insurance on their certificate of insurance. 
social guidelines and financial and directors are going to be expected to make financial contract language for our independent contract directors and suggest that they take terms that are going to be combined with the language. Susie Warner, also our director and portfolio, she's the most recent for work for BPC and the HRA, who will be issuing rates in the same age method. Susie Warner, our director and portfolio, she's the most recent for work for BPC and the HRA, who will be issuing rates in the same age method. Last month, my director and portfolio, she's the most recent for work for BPC and the HRA, who will be issuing rates in the same age method. Susie Warner, our director and portfolio, for me to review and advise her and 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 advise her of any unnecessary changes. Share your how how and more more back by mentioning she will know her or any changes you might like to make. I I E A A director and very very provide my copy of the result of the loan and guidelines for making the review. Very very few changes. Guidelines are noted. How how much more for all all the tax bills and bills are on the city that they create these guidelines. Share your account and suggest as you change the wording that they take it. She should like one official share of account or one shell phone and the RRLF administrator. She says that word wording is being revised and it should be more relevant and should follow the suit and be got guidelines well. Very easy to explain when it's word wording and direct reference to make the guidelines that they're not going to make their decisions. Spec Rex and Gus have a need for a revolution in the revolving all well loan funds in order for the flood funds to be restricted to a certain purpose and must be revolution. Spec Rex has, as they say, turned into a line for a temporary revolution. No action can take it until the right revolution in the city. It's part part head head. They want to go forward. They are very well. Spec Rex are going to take it. Report order to solve the way to see the amount of the current rate rate to allow the dollars mature and will be reviewed. All at it. Another recycling amendment in the work group to make it in the answer to the answer of one being said that the answer is $34,500 in the small value waste compound. I see the ADP directly, the ship record is reported, the Air Force Memorial Hospital has opted to continue through the search program, the Health and Family in Illinois, Family and Family in Canada, and WIC. A discussion has been held with the Board of Health about the health health part of the taking on our program, but it was decided not to take any action for the DPP needs or services. The deadline letter for the grant rate for the grant rate has all held that back. The committee will be reviewed by the plane, the committee will be moved by the Board of Health, backed by the other recruiters, to pay the plane up to the account now for approval, a roll call of all votes will take the plane to the motion area. As there was no further business on the board of the meeting, it was moved by the Board of Health, backed by the Board of Health, and I think it was the same time. Motion carried by the board of health, all of which is not currently submitted, and I'm going to deliver it on that one. I think you're right, right? I know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, revolving loan guideline finalized, or will be for next month, or the or that time? I, I, I think that that month is there. There will be no finalization by finalizing that month.
state annual rent amount will increase annually using the USDA or the US Department of Labor DCI inflation <coughs> calculator unless we notify them 90 days in advance. Finance Director Anita Putnam provided the committee with a copy of the current lease, the DCI inflation calculator, <coughs> and a letter that was sent to them last year regarding their increase. Based on the DPI inflation calculator, their increase amounts to six dollars and twenty cents per square foot. It is moved by all seconded by Barb Waffle to increase Champaign County Regional Planning Commission's rent from six per feet per square foot to six point per square foot based on the USDA the US Department of Labor's DPI inflation calculator and extend their lease agreement one year. <coughs> the roll call vote. I take a motion carried in the future for longer leases or larger increase for preferred events or to be sent out. Maintenance supervisor Chris Drake reported on the following. <coughs> Drake received a bid for waxing and stripping of floors from the USDA office and part of the team bid. The work will need to be done during weekends. Weekend hours and break will need to be present. <coughs> it moved by to get a second law by awful to accept A1 Carpet care quote of seven hundred and seventy five dollars for carpet cleaning services in the USDA office. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. It was moved by Hathbar and second by Johnson to accept the roadside services quote of eight hundred and eighty five dollars for floor stripping and waxing services. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. The parents questioned whether there were any other offices or hallways that will require services in the near future. Great study will look into it and get prices on what needs to be taken care of. Freehill Asphalt provided great with multiple proposals on sealing, striping, and repairing the port house parking lot. They said the south lot is beyond repair and Freehill Asphalt is concerned when it comes to clean the lot with their machinery that they will cause it more harm. They did provide the county with multiple options including 819 square feet of asphalt patching the cost of six thousand three hundred and forty seven dollars and twenty five cents. One thousand nine hundred and sixty four square feet of asphalt patching at a cost of fourteen thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. Steel coating <coughs> striping all lot at the courthouse at a cost of eighteen thousand and forty five dollars and thirty seven cents. They acknowledge there is a serious hot pole issue in the parking lot that needs addressed. As far as said, the Highway Department volunteered to supply the task mix and task box. Drake will contact County Engineer Joel Moore about the possible issue. It was moved by Barb Alt by R. It was moved by Alpha and second by Half Barton to accept Free Hill and Asphalt proposal of eighteen thousand forty five dollars and thirty seven cents to steel boat and strike the north and south parking lot to the courthouse. The roll call vote is taken motion carried. Great reported inspections on the roofs have been completed by Slagle and Langways. Inspections for the elevator and boiler are also complete. Great contacted the vendor to work on issues with the jail doors. This has been run. It is moved by Half Bargain, second by McGinnis, to enter into executive session at 10.21 a.m. to discuss 5 ILCF 120-2C. One, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body. Motion carried by a voice vote. <coughs> was moved by awful, second by all, come out of executive session at 10.59 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. No action was taken in the executive session. The community reviewed the claim. It was moved by half order and second by awful to pay claim subject to county board approval. Motion carried by a roll call vote. It was moved by all, second by awful to adjourn the meeting at 1101 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted and a new vote to action. The motion on the board will approve the amendment to the committee report. Mr. Alf, are you seconding? No, I'm mentioning that we have a change in those rates as of this morning. As of okay. okay, second. Okay, okay. now. Mm -hmm. I move we open up the section on the uh, rate of these two Vanguard, what was the other one? The update for this morning's reading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you want to move? Yeah. 
to for special consideration yeah. the part where it covers the rate. Yes. Okay. Just on the gas. On the gas. We have to go by today's rates if we do that. Is there a second to that motion? Yeah. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? Today's rate. All right. Currently, Vanguard rate is 0 0.319 per term for a three-year contract. Um, Mansfield Energy three-year contract is 0 0.309. So we are a penny per term lower going with Mansfield Energy over Vanguard. Vanguard is going to be decided, but the rates have changed. So. Um, I guess what we need to know is which rate we want to go to with and at what percentage do we want to go 100%, which they don't recommend. We want to go 50, 40, 70, 30. And we've got questions on why any of that is. Um, when you lock in your price, if you lock in 100%, then you're going to pay for 100% of your gas usage, of your historical gas usage, whether you use it or not. That's why they recommend locking in a percentage and then going with a fixed rate on the other. That way, if it's a warm year, you don't use much gas, you're not paying for gas, you're not using it. <coughs> <coughs> so the board is aware, like right now our contract is 44 cents. And we are at 100%. We're with Vanguard, and we buy 100% of our <coughs> historic amount. And so we bought like 7,800 firms this last month at 44 cents, and we didn't use it all. So we sold back just over 2,000. Well, the market right now is 25 cents per firm. So that's why this by uh, part only part of your usage would be helpful at a time when rates are decreasing. As an example, that kind of explains what you're doing. So I guess, what do people think about percentages? They recommend 60, 40 or 70, 30, something like that. And, um, I guess, Anita, which you, you said were what would be a better percentage with what our usage has been? 64 to 70 per year up in the air? Well, it, it really depends on what you think the market is going to do. If you think costs are going to go down, it's a hedging thing. And I'm an accountant, so I like to, think, I like to know the number. So for me, I like 70% to 60, I don't know. <laughs> but you can, it depends on what you think the market's going to do. Well, even on a warm year, right. on a warm year, we've always used at least 70% of our historical, right? Right. Okay. The, the guy that gave a presentation explained that trending up to 40 was going up. Right. So, so by locking in more, it does go up a lot of things on a better. Did you also contact, you only mentioned um, codes changed rates from two vendors. Did yes. you hear from oh, the other? Vanguard is <coughs> the new rate because that's what we decided on. Right. The other one called up and wanted to give us a rate. Okay. So that's why we have to. Okay. So we assume the others have stayed exactly, have stayed the same. We don't know. They didn't, they didn't. They're out of the picture. Okay. Yeah. I know historical rates would have some bearing on it, but I, I kind of like 60-40. To me, any closest to 50-50, any the closest number to that would be probably less risky. Well, or the more you lock in, I mean, that's fixed. Right. You know that. Right. And well, like you said, they say it is 
starting to speed <coughs> up. So the more we lock in, you know, the less we'll buy on the variable. Just right? on the uncertainty, like you say, you're rolling yeah. the dice either way. And yeah, next thing you're going to be down. Any thoughts on you want to go with Vanguard at point three nine one nine or they haven't voted? Yeah, voted. I guess you gotta vote the stuff before we can talk to you.
the floors in the three buildings, well, for sure the courthouse and the jail, haven't been done since probably about 2010 um, because of the layoff of the maintenance staff. I don't believe they've done, they've had, this kind of came about again once we hired a new maintenance person. I was contacted by the USDA office that, hey, this is in our contract. We haven't really complained about it. You guys haven't been doing it. So I know it's been a number of years since it's been done uh, at the USDA office as well. And so um, we only got one bid on the stripping and waxing, the other two floor cleaners and gate carpet bids uh, didn't want to touch the wax stripping and waxing and based on the bid that we did get for it, um, it found it, I mean, it was only about a hundred bucks or a little over a hundred dollars more than the carpet cleaning which is a, it's a more labor intensive process than the carpet cleaning is. And this is just a <coughs> the two rooms? Well, it's wherever they got tile at in there. So it's the whole time. I know it's not much money. You have to touch no, that's, we did used to do it in-house, along with mowing and snow plowing and all of that, which we don't do anymore. Thank you. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we ever own a carpet cleaner? <coughs> I don't know if we ever owned a carpet cleaner or not. Um, and I know sometimes going to the retailers and getting the the personal one that you can take home and clean your carpets are this is I mean you're talking the carpet there you're talking thousands of square feet of carpet which would be a labor intensive for one guy with a non commercial carpet cleaner that he rents from somewhere. I don't think I asked this before, and maybe it was said and I just didn't get it. It was actually the whole thing with the, um, the service and everything. Where did we get that information? They sent it to us. They? Uh, you wanting how many firms? Or no, I just books? wanted to know who, who okay. gave us the... Vanguard sent and, and then the Fancy. city sent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they both, because um, one o'clock today is when the market closes, so <coughs> two, we have to have a signed contract by right. then, so that they can lock that price in. Okay. So it Thank changes you. every day since it's a commodity. No worries. Thank you. Um, on the lease for the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission, were we um, within the 90-day notice or that we passed? <coughs> so we missed the opportunity, which happened to us last year, right? Yeah. So Hopefully we, they're working on putting that on a calendar so that it pops up earlier. Okay. And secondly, um, in um, the last paragraph where you came out of executive session, it says no action was taken in executive session. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you can take action in right, executive right. session. So I think we need to change that. That looks like we did second the appearance of... Um, yeah. Just say no action was taken or whatever. It's a small thing. Any other comments about this? I'd like to point out that the Mr. Drake, I'm sure could confirm this, pointed out that this parking lot in question is going to turn into black pebbles. It's so bad it's going to have to be replaced in the not too much distant future. And it might be good for the finance committee to, to consider keeping some of that money in our maintenance fund instead of giving it all the revolving fund. It's going to cost a lot of money when it's necessary. <coughs> Any other comments? Is that, is that number the, the actual motion that came out of there for the striping 18,000 <coughs> to change is that from the ballpark where it was when we did it last? I think when we did it three years ago, it was right. I was thinking it was like 19, maybe right around 19. So, very close. And um, I believe Mr. Drake has been in contact with the county engineer, and uh, Mr. Moore came and looked at the potholes and the areas of concern we have in both parking lots, and they set up a 
land on County Highway catching those for us would be appreciated. Can we consider that parking lot at County Road in Los County? No. Okay, are there any other comments on this report? Seeing them, the clerk will call the roll, please.
Dr. Yusuf said he is unsure that he will review the contract. Stigma discussed possible additional duties for the general <coughs> control clerk with the department head. Manager said when her office does the purge of voter registration files this year, it entails mailing out new reg uh, voter registration cards and she can use help with the mailing process. Coons Hagen says she can also use her help during tax time when bills are being mailed and when payments are being received. Stigma addressed uh, address better publicity for rabies vaccination clinics. He said we may need to put out press releases in the vicinity where the clinics are held. Prince Hagen provided samples of what was done previously when animal control was handled through the treasurer's office. The animal control clerk should be responsible for the publication of press releases for the clinics. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Premier and seconded by Waffle to adjourn the meeting at 9.31 and uh, motion carried by those who <coughs> the first vote, all of which is respectively submitted, signed by all of those present, and I would move for its adoption. The motion down to Florida from the tax committee report. Is there a second? No further. Any questions or discussions on the report? Mr. McGinnis. <laughs> I would say right now, maybe um, on the list, there's probably 40. And this is what we acquired through the Yes. The county trustee asked um, for the white ad like tax buyer and then nobody else bids on properties, they're less desirable properties usually, yeah. and no other tax uh, buyers bid on them when the county trustee uh, does the process on behalf of the county, and we actually say the <coughs> court actually gets to be for them instead of not reviewing. So that's how we end up with them. Is the sale yearly or I mean, the, not the tax sale, but the Right, the auction that they have. It used to be yearly and then they kind of thought where they were only doing it every two years. Um, yeah, and uh, supposedly we will be having one sometime this year. And the next question, and it, it may be these things are, if we put tax sales in the mail by May 12th, then the residents can pay in June and September. Well, that's, 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 amazing. That's, that's correct. Okay. But if we do but it after like, May 12th, it's June and August. Right. Because of <coughs> deadline, publication and certified mail deadlines based on when yeah. you're... Uh, so, <coughs> I guess my question is, we're doing everything we can to get the bill in by May 12th to give our residents as much time to pay the tax. Well, I don't know where we could have. It just seems weird that if it's after May 12th, they have more time. And yeah, that's a Mindy thing, not me. If it's after May 12th, they have less time. To and I just want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to give as much time as possible. To the it only takes our office two to three days to print and get in the mail. It's the process is before and it doesn't. So it's, it's, it's safe for us to say that. They will, they, they will be in the mail by May 12th. No, they no. won't be in the mail by May 12th. So our residents now have the to pay The goal is an accurate tax yeah. bill, not a tax tax bill, and we're not That's ready yet. Says. So we're not ready yet. We still have several steps. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, I mean, we, we just need to try to do as much as we can to give them more time to pay the bill before. Mm -hmm. If you're following my logic. Okay. Was, was the multiplier a little little fish I got? No, um, actually, we got an office back a little bit off. Sorry, Bob. Sorry, I didn't. 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 Sorry, thing of May 12th? No, I don't believe so. The steps for the certified mail and the publication, yeah. So you, you, they, you back it up from when your tax sale is. Yeah. So no, well, uh, uh, my, my question on that was the <coughs> June and September due date, is it sent prior to May 12th? 
mm -hmm. versus after May 12th we send the bill, they now have to pay it by August, right? Is that a state statute thing or is that a county thing? If it's statute, then I will... Part of it is and part of it isn't, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's something that the policy can work with uh, and present it on maybe... May 1st in the real world, you know, exactly. in the fantasy world. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of things out of control. It just seems backwards to, it's in our best interest if you want to think we wait till May, May 13th to May off so we can get the money quicker. Uh, just, uh, yeah, the distribution will be, you know, later. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments on the tax report? I just like to say that I think that this uh, staying and neutering clinic is just an incredible asset for our county, and I, I think it's a wonderful thing. I'm just really glad we're able to do that. Just a positive, no crazy. Dr. Musil has done a great job getting that in place. Any other questions or comments on the tax report? Yes. 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 Motion passes 19 to nothing. Health committee, Mr. Cromley. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred help would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on May 2nd, 2017 at 9.36 a.m. For the present, were Cromley, McTaggart, Awful, Kersley, and Whitmer. Coconauer was absent. Also present, county board chairman John Scherr, ICPHD administrator D. Shippert, county board member Sticknock and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. ICPHD Administrator G. Shipper gave a state budget update, noting no progress has been made on the state budget and $81,812.46 is owed to the health department. Shipper reviewed the program summary report for April. Temporary food per permit have increased. Water inspections for the month increased due to the public health week. Wells and septic are also increasing. Shipper noted that senior service numbers are decreasing. Shipper gave an update on the health department's audit stating all passed and she is pleased with the results. Shipper reviewed the grants and contract spreadsheet. <coughs> the only available grants at this time are preschool vision, hearing, and vector control slash West Nile applications have been submitted for both grants. Shipper attended a meeting at Iroquois Memorial Hospital on April 27, and the Board of Trustees decided to discontinue WIC services and the grant contracts for family case management and healthy families of Illinois would not be renewed through the state of Illinois. The Board of Health meets May 3rd and will discuss whether or not to take back the program. Shipper said if the Board of Health chooses to take on the programs, the health department will require the employees to the programs as well as space. Shipper said she recommends not taking on the family case management programs, but she is unsure of what to do with the other programs. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Hawthorne and seconded by Person to adjourn at 1026 a.m., all of which is respectfully submitted signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. Motion on the floor to approve the health committee report. Is there a second? Any questions or comments on the report? I have one question. What did the board decide on May 3rd? The board decided not to take any action at the time. However, um, I'm working diligently to make sure that the services remain in Iroquois County through other avenues. Another question Does that need on another outside entity outside the public health department? Okay. So then we'll on 
So right now, the, the grants for family case management and the HFI are grants that were awarded to the hospital. So we don't have anything to do with those. Those grants, the deadline to apply for those has passed. I was notified on the 27th. They, the grants for the, the de grant deadlines for those were April 21st. So um, the WIC contract, however, is our grant that we subaward. We don't subcontract it. That means they do part of the work. We subaward it, which means they do all of the work. So we subawarded that. So we were a pass-through entity to Iroquois Memorial Hospital. So I have been granted an extension on that. So I'm working on ways to combine all three services. So those <coughs> services are lost. We're unable to do that through the health department. But other entities who have already put in applications, we are we are working with them to to make sure that services are, are done in Airport County through their current grant applications. You you're <coughs> in the line here. Um, but it's an, an entity okay. uh, other than the hospital or the public health department. It is. And okay. I, 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 I don't know how this is gonna work out, but I I I, and I had actually asked one of the <coughs> county board members not to share this, but I will share an email with you since you're asking. <coughs> I will share an email with you on on something that that we're working on. Okay. The details are not worked out yet. Well, I don't know okay. if I have this date one. approval, but I'll share this with you. This email was sent to me was was sent by me to Stephanie Beth. Stephanie Beth is the WIC coordinator for the Department of Human Services. To Link Jan Kelsey, the Family Case Management um, Director for the Department of Human Services. Um, to Stephen Strode, who is one of the big wigs at CHS, um, Ellen McCullough, who is the coordinator for the maternal child programs that are all serviced out of your home Memorial Hospital until June 30th, and to Julie Cry, the administrator at the Champaign Urbana Public Health Department. But my, my letter is addressed to Stephanie Beth. Good morning, Stephanie. I have been working diligently to find a way to ensure that these valuable services with family case management as well as HFI remain in Iroquois County and are accessible to the residents of Iroquois County. As you are aware, Iroquois County is the third largest land mass county in Illinois. Our county population of just under 30,000 is scattered throughout the county with many small towns and villages as well as numerous farms. Once we get, the county seat is the largest city in Iroquois County with a population of approximately 5255. Our county is unique in the fact that there is only one combined shopping center or Walmart in the county and is located in Wachuca. There are no shopping malls or other large chain stores other than Dollar General or Casey's throughout most of the county. This is an important factor for consideration as many of the clients will have to travel long distances to obtain services. Wachuca is lo located in the center of the county and is already being accessed for shopping by many county residents. <coughs> as you know, many WIC family case management clients have trouble obtaining transportation, more specifically, gas money. In summary, I feel that the services will be best utilized if they remain in Watsika. I understand that you are looking at several options for Airport County services, but I am extremely hopeful that you will consider my request to allow Champaign-Urbana Public Health District to absorb the Airport County state flows and allocation amount for the WIC Family Case Management and HFI program. DUPHD is willing to set up a permanent office or building space and want to get in cooperation with the Iroquois County Public Health Department for WIC, Family Case Management, and HFI services. Our health departments already have a tremendously positive working relationship and partner on HIV, communicable diseases, and other needed services. Julie Pride, Administrator, and Brandon Moline, Director of Maternal Child Health Services with CEPHD, are on board and are willing to help us keep these services in, in what we get. In addition, the UPHD is willing to hire the current staff from Airfront Memorial Hospital to provide these services. That would be a tremendous blessing for everyone involved, including the clients who utilize these services. Additionally, no new employee training would be required at this time. I've spoken to Julie and Brandon. Ellen McCullough has spoken with her WIC Family Case Management and HFI staff, and together we are all very excited about this possibility. This possibility would allow the same services in the same city by the same staff remain viable. Now, before I go on with this, because there's just one more short part, I want you to keep in mind that the UPHD is eligible because they had already applied before the grant deadline. Okay? 
Thank you for considering our special request to have Iroquois County Wood Family Case Management and the HFI case load numbers and DHS monetary allocation amounts absorbed into the current DUPH, DUPHD applications for these programs. With this possibility, no subcontract or sub-awards would be necessary, which would be beneficial to all, especially with the new data.u requirements associated with subcontract and sub-award indirect cost rates. This could be a win-win for all. Please let us know as soon as the decision by DHS has been made so that we may proceed with securing a location in Watsika for these services and may resume collaboration between our agencies regarding equipment, salaries, etc., respectfully and sincerely <coughs> and I find it. So we'll, we have had conversations, I've had conversations with the DHS director um, for these programs. Um, they are making a decision about what they are going to do about our caseload numbers and our grant allocation amounts since no one, yeah, since no applications were, are going to be viable. I may just apply, but the, 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 then they voted to not do that. So, so what will happen is they will either decide to award the grant money, the grant allocation money that would have been set aside for Iroquois County and our case was they will divide it up between the surrounding county um, and let our residents travel to those counties for services. Or we presented them with another option to, and so that they may be willing to leave, let the services remain in Iroquois County. Another positive benefit to allowing those services to remain in Iroquois County in cooperation with Champaign Urbana Public Health District. Um, is that they have also offered, CPHD has also offered Iroquois County residents, will also offer Iroquois County residents wraparound services, which means services that we are not eligible for grants to apply for. They get grants that we are ineligible for because of our population size, because of our location, etc. One of those things is STD clinic. State of Illinois um, only allows STD clinics within a certain mileage range from another one and we find a certain one. So we're never going to be eligible because we're too close to St. Pete County, we're too close to Champaign County for those mileage requirements. They would, under their grant, bring those services, expand those services into Iroquois County. Um, so we are looking at having one location and that would provide um, services that we're not eligible to apply for into our county in cooperation with us. Um, Julie Cry has made it very clear that she will make sure that whatever services they bring do not um, do not interfere or or um, negate our services. So they in other words they wouldn't bring anything that we already offer and compete with us. They would be a supplement for us. It would be a win win for everyone. I do not know what the DHS um, entities will will decide, but I can tell you that I'm surprised that, well, you guys probably wouldn't be surprised at the politics involved in it. So um, there are a lot of other factors and behind the scenes things going on and, um, you know, but I'm still hopeful that we'll get these services in Iroquois County and that they can be done with a very stable health <coughs> department. Um, one factor for you to consider is that um, last summer when 50% of the health departments in the state of Illinois, because of the lack of state budget, were not receiving payments for their grant funding. Right. to reduce hours and, and um, lay off staff. UPHD <laughs> was not in that position. Mm -hmm. They are very well, um, mm -hmm. they are very financially stable. Julie Craig had a board meeting with her board of health last night, and they did, the board, her board of health is, is all for, um, because they're a public health district, not a public health department, they can expand anywhere. And they already have locations, at satellite locations in Effingham. They have a satellite location in Ramona County. They have, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I wasn't even aware, unaware of that until last night. They didn't have a satellite in Kansas County. So um, that's what we're working on. I will keep you updated as, as the progress of that. But we you can't imagine the hours that we've worked to try to keep these services in your Boy County for people. Um, we're hoping that um, that this can be done and can be done. I have one more question. Yeah. If you, if you can 
keep the service in your county. Are we going to have to provide a location <coughs> and so that's all done through the channel? No. Um, I've done a lot of, we've done a lot of work trying to secure a location already so that we have ducks in a row because if this comes about, we're going to have to move very quickly. The services end at, at your federal law hospital in June 30th. So um, we have um, spoken to a several realtors um, to get information. We've spoken to some business owners that have that own buildings that, that are empty. We think that we have one location. I mean, it's not set in stone by any means, but we have one in mind and a tentative rent amount has been even established and they're checking on what the utilities will cost. No. Keep in mind, all this is done. I'm, I'm, I'm assisting to help you keep these services, but this is not done through ICPHD. This will be through Champaign Urbana Public Health District because they have already applied for those grants so I'm, that we did not have the opportunity to we missed the deadline. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the health committee report? Any other first or follow up? Johnson. Yeah. From Weedy. Yes. Yeah. Lamine. Yes. Yeah. McGinnis. Yes. Yeah. McTaggart. Yes. Yeah. Awful. Yes. Yeah. Persley. Yes. Yeah. Shore. Yes. Yeah. Pignot. Yes. Yeah. Whitlow. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hall. Yes. Yeah. Anderson. Yes. Yeah. Barron. Yes. Yeah. Bill. Yes. Yeah. Coleman. Yes. Yeah. Copenhauer. Yes. Yeah. Crow. Yes. Yeah. Curtis. Yes. Yeah. Half Barton. Yes. Yeah. That motion passes 19 to 0. IT committee, Mr. Crumley. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board. Your committee to whom is referred IT would beg leave to submit the following report on the matter before you. Your committee met at the administrative center <coughs> on May 2nd, 2017 at 1032 a.m. Members present, Crumley, McTaggart, Bills, and Sherb. Also present, Finance Director Anita Speckland. Front board member Marvin Sicknott, Wendy Davis, and Wendy Davis of the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. IT Chairman from Woody discussed area wide metrics. He said with the oncoming of the new board members, there have been some grumbling about the service. I'd like to amend that. It should say the cost. I've only heard uh, complaints about the cost of the service we received, which is easy to critique. Finance Director Anita Beckham provided a spreadsheet analyzing service and projects from 2013 to 2017. Beckham explained the county began their relationship with AreaWide in 2012. The hourly rate was $125, but we were only charged $90 per hour, plus we've never been billed for a trip charge. From we also noted they were the only vendor that would work with us without a binding contract. Beckman said they wouldn't in, enter into a managed service contract because of the shape of our because of the shape our system was mm -hmm. in. Instead, they gave a list of items they recommended be done before a managed contract be put in place. Beckman said the amount of time she now spends on IT is minimal because she can trust area wide to watch her system. Beckman informed the committee of the phone and internet outage that occurred on April 20th. Many hours were spent reporting the outage to AT and T. Beckman also contacted AreaWide that evening for assistance and they were on site the next morning. The rest of the hours of AreaWide reset all of AT&T's equipment and was able to bring up all of the downlines before AT&T arrived. It took, in total, it took AT&T 22 hours to respond. Beckman made it clear to AT&T that our 911 center and corrections office operate on these lines. While both locations have backups, the response time is still unacceptable. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Bill and seconded by McTaggart to adjourn at 11, 11 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. Motion on the floor to approve the IT report. Is there a second? Second. The bill. Any questions or comments on the report? I have a comment. Um, in regard to that, Rumbling about service and easy to critique. I cost, cost okay, but I've been one of those people that's questioned that, and I don't feel like I, it was a question. And we're supposed to do that, so I kind of take offense to that. No, uh, but 
I just have a few comments on that myself. Um, if you, I don't know, you should talk to the department heads and elected officials because uh, they could they could give you a good idea of what the system was versus what today. Um, it's not the replacement of people. It's, it's you have to move with the technology because the, the number one goal is we've got to do this tax cycle. That, if that fails for any reason, it's going to be a big problem. And we were at a very high risk of failure at one time. Any other comments on the report? Crow. I just have a quick question to make sure I'm reading this page correctly. Um, the number of days of IT service, 150.13, that's inclusive from 2013 to date? Um, yes. Let me look at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then we average that out by that number of years and get 2.83 right. a month. Okay. From Lee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. McGinnis. Yes. Yeah. McTaggart. Yes. Yeah. Awful. Yes. Yeah. Fursley. Yes. Yeah. Shore. Yes. Yeah. Sidnot. Yes. Yeah. Whitlow. Yes. Yeah. Hall. Yes. Yeah. Anderson. Yes. Yeah. Barron. Yes. Yeah. Bill. Yes. Yeah. Bowman. Yes. Yeah. Oakenauer. Yes. Yeah. Crow. Yes. Yeah. Curtis. Yes. Yeah. Half Bargain. Yes. Yeah. Johnson. Yes. Yeah. Uh, motion passes 19 to 0. Judicial and public safety, Mr. Burns. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, this may to whom was referred to judicial and public safety of beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. The committee met at the courthouse on May 3rd, 2017 at 3 p.m. Members present was Baron, McGinnis, Grove, Curtis, Lene, Offal, and Whitwell. Also present were Sheriff Derek Hagan, Coroner Bill Cheatham, Probation Supervisor Barb King, State Attorney Jim Devine, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, 911 Director Ida Google, County Board Chairman John Scherr, County Board Member Larry Halfbargain, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. The committee reviewed the agenda as moved by Vince Lee and carried by Barb's office to approve the judicial and public safety agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Sheriff Derek Kane discussed his monthly report for April. Hagan told the committee to uh, he had a correction <coughs> officer retiring on May 21st, which will amount to an approximate $10,000 salary difference when, when a new employee is hired. Hagan is in the process of reviewing applications. Hagan addressed the committee about the inmate meal charges to Aramark due to numerous comments that have been made. Hagan said Aramark provides the cook and the meal for the inmates and we pay for the services which usually cost between $70,000 and $75,000 per year. At one time, there were two full-time cooks on staff for salaries and budget. Benefits were budgeted at over $100,000 per year. In 2006, there has been $30,000 per year savings since switching to Irma. Coroner Bill Cheatham spoke about the increase in overdose staff. Probation Supervisor Barb King reviewed the Probation Court Services Activity Report <coughs> for April 2017 with the committee. State Attorney Jim Devine informed the committee he has a busy jury calendar starting Monday, which includes an attempted murder trial, a residential burglary trial, and a stolen car trial. Circuit Court Lisa Hines' monthly report was distributed to the committee for their review. 911 Director Knight Dubel distributed and discussed the ES. ETSB monthly report to the committee. Google gave a legislative update and asked for people to sign witness books opposing Senate Bill 985. This bill is requesting that a Rosemont subdivision not follow the law and consolidate, and it also doesn't state <coughs> the surcharge change to $1.05. Google is also continuing to watch Senate Bill. 1381, which would get rid of landline. Google said she still has two tel telecommunicator vacancies. Chad McGinnis began discussion on amending the ETSC ordinance. McGinnis says these amendments are coming about due to Edgar County Watchdog's claim of errors in the current ordinance. McGinnis said he believes to 
believe this committee should make recommendations to the policy and procedure committee and the county board. Judicial Chairman Lyle Barron stated, according to the county code book, this committee does not have the authority to make those changes. And he has provided his suggestions as to the changes he believes need to need he believes need to make to the ordinance. Google will make copies of the current ETSB ordinance and distribute them to all county kind of board members. The committee reviewed claims. It was moved by Ms. Bolin and seconded by Bob Walpole to take any subject to county board approval. <coughs> the roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Alpha and seconded by Lamini to adjourn the meeting at 4.9 p.m. Motion carried by the board clerk. Vote, vote, all of which is successfully committed and I'll move forward to that. Motion on the floor to approve the judicial report. Is there a second? Any questions or comments about the report? Mr. Crow. It's not in the minutes, but I think it's important to note that after a lengthy discussion of the 1995 ordinance, county ordinance, and the current statute, which will expire on June 30th, the state statute, that the Iroquois County Board is not currently in compliance with the state statute as to the number of board members appointed to the EPSB board. It clearly states one county board member. Any other questions or comments? Any other questions? Just as an end, if you have suggestions, please send it. The only thing I would like to add in is after Mr. Barron stated, you know, of course the county code book is about the authority, that Mr. Devine did state that it can be argued that the judicial committee does have the authority to discuss the EPSB because that's what it reports to. That's in the reported minutes, so I'd just like that to be on the record. So will that be on the agenda then again next month? Mrs. Crow has the floor. I just wanted to reiterate that I'd like my statement to be part of the written record also. In the past I made a mistake and, you know, didn't do that. So I want that part of the written record that we are noncompliant at this time. So is that going to be on the agenda then and revisited next month? I will make that decision. Any other questions? The judicial committee, we're going to meet again. I've been in discussion with them, getting suggestions and feedback to what it should be. I've had some board members call and give me some suggestions, which is why I noted between what I recommended as a policy and procedure, about one, I changed it to one-third, which based on numbers would give us more. But then it was also pointed out during that time that my suggestion may not be in compliance with state law, along with my recommendation during the judicial committee that the county chairman should have the authority to appoint the chair of that committee. But I think we should have a say in it if the law says one. So there's some things talking, and I met with John yesterday on some discussions about this evaluation, different things to help keep it moving forward and make something that represents our interest as well. And to be in compliance, we're also trying to, and it'll take a few, but my goal is hopefully the state legislature will give us some guidance closer to June 30th, but then some other procedural things to help ensure good management. And in addition to what Chad said, it was, it's a 1995 ordinance. So in regards to what the state does, there are numerous other housekeeping details that need attended to in the ordinance. And at this time, I'd like to, just to dot all the I's and cross the T's, formally request that it be placed on the agenda for judicial and public safety next month. Please. Anything else? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So, what did it say in there? I think it's not what the practice was. It stated there as part of the research of the property in the last four or five years. Uh -huh. I didn't state any of the findings as far as what they found, what they didn't find. It was just general. Um, Chad may talk talked to Terry quite a bit about it. Terry's not here, and Dean's here. But basically, in Terry's opinion, it's trying to get first financial out of any liability for future development in the area. I think that's silly for us to let them all go. That's exactly what it sounds like to me. And the city's in the same situation, so I, don't, right. I, I know you own the property that's involved on the corner. I have a will to say they're monitoring. <laughs> so, um, I would think it would be very wise to talk to the city to see what they're planning on doing. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, it seems like it's right. CYAF. Yeah. Okay. Do they have to give us those findings? Mm -hmm. uh, that was part of the request of Chad requested that if they want to do us to develop this ordinance, they need to start providing us with more detailed information on what's going on, what they found, what they haven't found. And obviously, John brought it up in the meeting. There's going to be a major construction project proposed with a railroad overpass in that area. So um, there could be a lot of movement of dirt in the, in the future. So in the, in the opinion of um, Terry and the committee that don't let the first financial off the hook based on us signing off on something to say, you know, so that's where it stands. So no action was taken. Yeah, we thought it would be of no advantage to the county and would be a great disadvantage to the residents to approve that request. Any other questions or comments on the zoning report? Being done, the clerk will call the roll. McGinnis? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Hersley? Yes. Sure. Yes. Midnight? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Paul? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bill? Yes. Coconut? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Half-Barton? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cromley? Yes. 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 Transportation and Highway, Mr. Bill. Mr. Chairman, members of the County Board, was made in the first transportation and highway. The regular report the following report on the matter before you. The committee met here for the County Highway Judging on May the 5th, 2017, at 9 a.m. Number 7 was Bill to all Pearl, Johnson, and Jackson. Kevin Bolton and I had voted for action. Mm -hmm. Also, the county engineer for the morning, county board chairman John Sherry, county board member Marvin Finney, and Wendy Davis of the county department. The meeting is called to order. County engineer Joe Moore opened some of my notebook box called the bid. The bid was as follows. County material for 45144 and the county concrete Forty-five thousand two hundred and forty-four. The bids were taken for review and <coughs> acted on later in the meeting. During uh, public comment, Don Crow made a comment of, to the committee to be aware of a informal meeting that was being held by IDOT on May the eighteenth from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. regarding the Vidoc on Route 1 at Milford. And a comment on the conversation we had in the previous time. The claim for financial court for month for review was moved by Paul Gold and called by John Crow to pay the bill subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken and motion carried. County Highway was 116,793. County bridge was 17,752. County motor fuel tax was 26,377. And township motor fuel tax was 201,404. County engineer Bill Moore gave an update on County Highway 8 and County Highway 37 intersection, stating that there have been many accidents reported this location. 
that's up in the northwest county, uh, north west township over there. <coughs> Moore said that said that a normal size stop sign is major at 30 inches. They chose to go to a 36 inch stop sign for this location <coughs> along with rumble strips and double stop ahead sign. Melville Township has requested a placement of a yield sign at 1800 North, 1880 North, and 2280 East at the Mill Fort intersection. It was moved by Sherry Johnson and started by Crow to approve this Mill Fort Township request to place a yield sign at 1880 North, 2280 East in the Mill Fort Township intersection. A motion carried, a motion carried by the voice vote. That's more of a full field cemetery going out to the summary point in terms of where the sun is going to be. We'll the Highway Safety Improvement Program, grant for guardrail improvements and inventory. More than he had hired a consultant to do guardrail inventory on the entire county system. More would also <coughs> like to include guardrails and employ into the county system. Uh, include the guardrail as a layer into our GIS system. The consultant contract is not to exceed $17,000. The previous to open box public bids for Belmont Metro were reviewed and no other was found. It was new by Crow and second by Jen Jan to approve the county material bill of 45134 for the Belmont Melbourne box office and church. It was all over the system and motion failed. Under old business, Johnson asked more if the maintenance supervisor, Chris Brent, took the hand about the courthouse parking lot. More answers, yes. The highway department will handle patching and then chips in the courthouse parking lot at no cost. Under new business, more are reminded the committee to currently budget $10,000 a year for the GIS fund. Now that GIS, GIS fund is fully functional, he will no longer include that in his budget because he would like to begin developing his own layers to the GIS. Or has contacted the vendor for a service package that includes layers to a GIS. Or I sent back the vendor for the service package to set up five user license and two days on site training for a total of five thousand dollars. And I said he would like to be able to add two additional users and is waiting for revised quotes that include this. He's also looking for a proposal to move forward on the GIS layer that includes all the group information. Often more spoke to the committee about hiring an additional administrator staff to help the current administrative secretary when it comes. So it was about four years of experience on that one, so unfortunately I'm three years on that. More know that the secretary for the additional position is not budgeted, but it said he believes that there will be you will need to hire a person at a study administrative power to make each secretary way rather than having that kind of personally to work with on the good candidate. Last so week, again, it's told the community that our department repaired a culvert in front of the home this month and the homeowner greatly, the homeowner gave a great amount of praise for the, for the crew for their job well performed. As there is no further business to come before the committee, it is moved by the hands and back to the council to attend the hands of the father of the union.
how long did that get? Because I heard it was turning black. Yeah, right. uh, no, that, that, I think we can probably continue to, to maintain the north one for a few more years. I don't know on that south. When you get in that southwest corner, it's getting pretty bad. I don't know what, what to say about that. But just have to be able to go and see how that would be made. They want to just see the just see the one at the same point. Since it's just like you know, so. we're gonna see we're gonna see how this goes. We we patched several times there but we never done the chip seal after the patch, so we're gonna see if that helps the longevity of a little bit. Thank you. Know. The further you have something? Yeah. Um I noticed the yield sign is being replaced in eighteen eighty four. 2280 East in a middle fork intersection. Why not replace that with a stop sign? Um, uh, First thing, there's no sign there at all right now. It's an unmarked crossing. Uh, it's north of the Oak Hill Cemetery here in Watsika. Uh, this is Mr. Corning Rand to the Wilson's house years ago. There's a new subdivision out there, a little bit more traffic. The road commission there feels that a yield sign would be a good idea to be placed there. So there's no existing sign there now at all. He just wishes to get a yield sign there and really the endorsement of the county highway department would be a positive thing to do. I think personally yield signs are dangerous. They ought to be replaced or taken off the streets of Illinois. Stop signs what they say. Stop. Yield signs just allows you to most people just go right through them. Yeah, and I understand the thoughts on that, but you know, some people think those are made to move people, not some people. Don't be the next one. <laughs> are there any other questions or comments about the highway report? <laughs> we did a survey on that, right, Joel? So you know which way the yield sign but yeah, the traffic patterns tend to go by the cemetery <coughs> and to the west. That's the reason the yield was decided. And it really, it's iffy whether it even requires a yield, but there was some concern. I guess there's some close calls there. So it, it's kind of iffy it, 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 whether it means anything. There's only one reason to go east. And that, and that. Check out that being done. 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 Anderson. Yeah. Barron. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. Holman. Yeah. Okanauer. Yeah. Crow. Yeah. Curtis. Yes. Yeah. 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 From Weedy. Yeah. Levine. Yeah. Levine. Yeah. Levine. Yeah. That motion is approved 19 to 0. Next on the agenda is approving the claims. Everybody has a copy of the claims in front of them. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Barron. Mr. Barron. Are there any questions or comments about the comments? Any none, the clerk will call the roll. Awful. Yeah. Hersley. Yeah. Sure. Yes. 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 McGinnis. Yeah. McTaggart. Yeah. Motion to approve 19 to 0. Next to our point. Our motion to approve 18 to 1. Mr. Whitwell. Is there any questions or comments about this motion? On the border review, who appoints those? I do not. It seems like they're all from one area. Melbourne, Melbourne, and Shelby. If there's no one else in that. Uh, County that from the west or the north. Do you have any names that were submitted to me by Mr. Yerba? Are the people that have served on the board before? I'm just asking what. Well, the hard part is finding somebody exactly mm -hmm. where you think is qualified to do it. And then the second hard part is 
because of the state statute, the makeup has to be, because of the vote, it has to be two Republicans and one Democrat. Republicans typically aren't the hard ones defining the hard ones are the Democrats. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I had it. I had a Democrat prior over from Gilman, and she didn't work out. I wasn't happy with what the work she was doing, and obviously you know the name. Hey, you used to work in my office. She's highly qualified, and she's a Democrat. She happens to be from Melbourne. That's why I made the recommendation. Yeah. So we're just. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm standard. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any further questions about the appointment? Any none? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion to approve. Any old business this morning? Any new business? Motion to adjourn. Thank you.